Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and I'm about to tell you much more than you ever wanted to know about combination center drills. So let's begin. I have way more combination center drills than any man has a right to own, and I think I'll sell off some of them. But here's a partial selection of what I have. There are many others that are sitting around on different machines, different lathes different drill presses, but why do we use a center drill and what is the purpose? Well, there's actually several purposes. Then I'm also going to give you a little history on this if you can take it. There are two purposes for combination center drills. One is simply for you to drill a center hole in your work, such as this, often in both ends because you're going to hold the work between centers. So that's one of the purposes. The other purpose is to simply use it on the lathe or the drill press to get your hole started because they are short, stubby, and stiff and will not wander around on you like a, let's say, an eighth inch bit. So they are very useful for that purpose, although many people just use starter drills or spotting drills for that purpose. J.T. Slocum was a maker of micrometers and other tools, and there's J.T. Slocum himself, kind of a grouchy man, because they didn't have good medicine back then, and he probably had a variety of ailments. That's why he's so crabby looking. But anyway, he takes credit for being the inventor of the combination center drill. So anyway, before he came up with the combination drill, what they had to do was to drill a pilot hole, perhaps this size, followed by a 60 degree countersink. Now this is a 60 degree, do not confuse it with an 82 degree. You don't see these too often, and I have a multi-fluted one around here, I can't seem to find it, but these countersinks are not self-starting, as you can imagine, so you have to go in with a drill first. But the combination drill did both at once. So it was quite an ingenious development, and that was long before high-speed steel. So these would have been made of carbon steel, and the year was about 1891. Years ago, before we had live centers, ball-bearing centers that would rotate with the work, we used a dead center, but dead centers always required a lubricant, either white lead, which is now outlawed, or this type of high pressure, extreme pressure lube, number three. Chicago Manufacturing is the main uh, supplier of that, but it is excellent for centers, that is, dead centers. Not too many people know about this or ever use a dead center anymore. But the reason I'm telling you that, and here's a cross section of a center drilled hole in some Delrin plastic, and you can see that the pilot in there goes in a lot deeper than the countersink, so that is a little bit of a reservoir for your white lead or your CMD number three lube. There are a total of 15 different sizes of center drills available from McMaster Carr. So there's a number one, two, three, four, and five. These are by far the most common sizes that you might use. And I've had this set since I was in high school. I think my dad gave it to me. So this is Morse, and they probably still sell the sets, but they won't be in nice maple containers like this. And the lid is long gone. But let me show you another one. So here's another complete set of center drills in an ancient wooden case that is badly damaged and taped up. But there are seven in this set, and I believe, but I'm not positive, that these are slocums. So it's probably a very old set. You can't read the label, or should I say the label is missing. Some of you probably did not know, but center drills also come in various lengths. You know, sometimes you need a deep reach, and there they are. I have several of those. Also, they made them in a medium size, so I suppose there's all different lengths. As I just said, there is a set, numbers 1 through 5. They're even marked. There they are again, and th this is probably the most 
common size that you're going to use, a number four. I do not have a number six to show you, but here is a number, if I can find the, there's a number seven, and it is five eighths in diameter right here, and here is a number eight, and it is three quarters in diameter, and they make two sizes larger than this. If you're working with very large work like A-bomb, you need very large center drills, don't you? I'm not sure why I did this because it didn't show up very well, but I took a piece of clear acrylic and center drilled it with the number sevens, but it turned out pretty cloudy. I don't think I've really, I'm showing you much here, and this is a number eight. And always drill about two-thirds of the way up the 60-degree taper when you drill. That's the right depth. Not just to my fingernail there, and certainly don't drill in any farther than the end of the taper. I use center drills often enough such that I made these Morse taper holders so that I would always have them handy, one on each machine. You can't imagine what a problem it was in the school shop with center drills. And this is a number four, the type that I stocked the most often. But often the kids would break the tip off, such as you see here, but they weren't even aware that they did that. And when it wouldn't drill properly, they would just turn it around and run this into the hardened steel and ruin that end as well. And I could usually hear that clear across the shop when sparks were flying and squealing was going on. So, and sometimes they were broken on both ends, but the kids weren't able to uh, recognize that. They just thought that was the center drill and they'd start drilling with it. There are 15 sizes listed in the McMaster car catalog of the combination center drills. Now, I don't know who would ever use these tiny ones that are all the way from aught up to 5 aught. They still have a 1 8 inch body, but a smaller pilot. But starting at number 1 there, this is the body size, all the way down to the number 10, which is the A-bomb size, as I mentioned, 1 inch. The largest that I have, which I mentioned before, is the number 7 and the number 8. They also list a number four and a half. I have never seen one of those. It has a three-eighths body diameter. The pilot on a center drill will get dull and it is sharpenable if it's long enough, especially in the larger sizes. You are not going to attempt to sharpen this size. Throw it away. This one has been hot. You can see that and it's even a little bit dull here on the countersink portion. Remember this is 60 degrees. I said that before. Not 82 degrees, so you cannot countersink for a wood screw or a machine screw. If you have been following my videos for years, you might remember me talking about daubers. So your older Atlas lathes and your older South Bend lathes, older than this, and many other brands, often had a little hole right here with a dauber in it, and the purpose of that was for you to fill the hole with some of this, and then you could take just a dab of it, dip it, put it on your center, and then put it back for safekeeping in the hole. Raise your hand if you have a lathe with a hole for a dauber. And they did away with that, pretty much, with the advent of ball bearing centers. Well, did I do it? Did I tell you more than you wanted to know about center drills? Sorry if I did. Hope you enjoyed this short little video. There's lots of still pictures at the end, so make sure you watch those. Leave me a thumbs up if you like this type of video, and I'll see you in my next video.